Mm -hmm. I was going to ask for refill on the calendar. Okay. okay. Good evening. Welcome to, to the December 11th meeting of the Cape Elizabeth Town Council. Could we have the roll call by the clerk, please? <coughs> Chairman McLaughlin. Here. Councilor Cogsall. Here. Councilor Groff. Here. Councilor Jordan. Here. Councilor Linnell. Here. Councilor McGinty. Here. And Councilor Reed. Here. Thank you. Would you please join me in the pledge to the flag? I pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United, United States, States of America and, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, nation under God, God indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We have reports and correspondence from the councillors. Councillor now. Yes, uh, thank you, Madam Chairman. Uh, this is my second meeting tonight. I just came from a, another meeting of the, the folks that are trying to, uh, or that are uh, going forward with the teen coffee house. And I just wanted to tell people that uh, um, the, the, the spirit of giving is, is upon us. And uh, uh, they are looking, the Teen Coffee House is a, uh, it's a non-profit, uh, tax-deductible uh, outfit. And uh, it'll, it'll give our young people a place to go when they can't go other places. Uh, uh, it gives them a place to go where they can hang out, uh, which is a good thing and a normal thing for teens to do. Uh, in a uh, somewhat uh, or a, uh, with some supervision and they're looking for a portable hi-fi stereo system, open microphone equipment, a commercial popcorn machine, some uh, commercial quality uh, pool cues, beanbag chairs and so on and they're also looking for money and if anyone out there would like to help get this project off the ground um, you can uh, write a tax, tax deductible check out to the Cape Elizabeth United Methodist Church Teen Coffee House or just Teen Coffee House and send it over to the church or you can send it uh, to the town hall to my attention and I'll see that it gets there and I think it's an, an extremely worthwhile uh, effort for uh, the youth of our community and thank you. Thank you. Councilor McGinty. Um, Madam Chair if I may ask uh, Councilor Certainly. now a question. Uh, I've had several people uh, requesting uh, who they should contact if they want to volunteer their time mm -hmm. to assist at the coffee house. Do you have a, a contact person? Sure. Um, Ruth Watson uh, is in the phone book and uh, uh, she's probably a key person to contact or, or let me know if you, uh, uh, if that's helpful. Okay. Thank you. I, I have one other item. Uh, last week uh, the Cape Coalition put on a presentation regarding uh, inhalants over at the, uh, the middle school and it it was a great presentation. They had an excellent panel of uh, experts in the field. And uh, Kevin Sweeney, I'd like to commend him for bringing together such a great group. It was, uh, it was very informative, and there was an excellent turnout. A lot of people showed up for it. And so again, uh, I'd like to thank the Cape Coalition for putting that on. Thank you. Councillor Reed. Madam Chair, I have a question of Councilor McGinty. Um, for the public, is that being rebroadcast for those people who are unable to attend? You know? I know that uh, CETV was there recording it. I'm not certain of what the rebroadcast uh, times may be. Thank you. Um, I would also like to go on to say that uh, the reason I wasn't there was I had the uh, privilege and opportunity to attend the National League of Cities, um, a uh, convention of over 10,000 elected officials and uh, administrators uh, to learn more about how to uh, have better governance. And I uh, have attended learning sessions and brought back materials. And I will be submitting a report to the town council as soon as I catch up on several of the things I didn't do while I was at that meeting. But thank you for the privilege. And I will have a report in writing. Thank you. Anybody else? Councilor Jordan. Just, just an offhand comment about that. I'm glad to see the flagpole and the flag that goes up by the Robin Mary for the veterans. It's been a long time coming, and I want to thank the ones that was involved in, in getting pushing to get it done. Also, I'd like to say that, of course, to me, it means probably more than a lot of people, but the old High school, I think, looks tremendous as you ride by it now, where it's been painted and not having the windows fixed up. 
She was going down here fast, but I'm glad they brought it back. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councilor Jordan. Councilor Coxell. I don't know if you were going to cover this, Janet, but I just wanted to remind the folks out there that donate, food donations are still being accepted here at the town hall for the special Christmas baskets. And um, the donations have been coming in very slowly, so we'd appreciate um, a little more interest, please. Just bring them here to the town hall. Thank you. What, what is the time frame deadline on that? It'd be really helpful if it was the Friday before uh, Christmas. Is that the 20th, I think? I've got the wrong calendar. I've got a new calendar. I'm going to be confused. Which is the 20th. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Councilor Reid. I just, a uh, confirmation, that's any non-perishable food items are being accepted, and that's for families in Cape Elizabeth? All right. Thank you. Yeah, just on that, Madam Chairman, members of the Council, uh, we, we did receive a lot of generous donations uh, prior to Thanksgiving uh, as a result of some good work by the Boy Scouts as well as the Lions Club, and Barbara Ray also worked very closely with them. We helped out 16 families at Thanksgiving. We also, I think for the very first time, had every turkey donated as a result of uh, some work uh, by uh, a gentleman, uh, I don't know if he wants to be publicly known, so I won't say his name right now, but who, who helped arrange some donations of turkeys that uh, originally came through the generosity of Filene's. So uh, that's been very helpful, but the, the food uh, is not quite as much as we'd like uh, at this point uh, heading towards Christmas, so any donations would be appreciated. Thank you very much. I just want to remind the public, and this was in a newspaper editorial on Monday, they're having public forums seeking a name for the bridge that will open next summer. When I queried the council last month, I was looking for uh, a nominee from Cape Elizabeth to serve on that seven-member committee, and our representative is Gary Beckwith. The one, two forums are being held next week, one on the 17th, which must be Tuesday night at 7 p.m. at um, City Council Chamber at Portland City Hall, and then on Wednesday night next week, the 18th at 7 p.m. in City Council Chambers at South Portland City Hall. And anybody interested is very welcome at either or both of those evenings, and you may also get information to the chair of the committee, Lee Urban, or I'm sure to Gary Beckwith here in Cape Elizabeth. Hope we'll have a successful process with that want to announce that Town Hall will be closing early, two days coming up later in this month. We'll be closing at noontime on the 24th, Christmas Eve. We'll be closing at 3 p.m. on the afternoon of New Year's Eve, the 31st. As will the library and the refuse disposal area we'll be closing those same times on those days. Thank you. <laughs> Please take note that next Tuesday, the 17th, the Planning Board will be holding a public hearing on the Zoning Ordinance re re Rewrite, and Council will have public, its own public hearings in early 1997. I do want to thank Councillor Reed. There was a recent article in the Cape Courier about different kinds of contributions that can be made to the town, and you had a very nice extensive list in there, different ways for people to join in the spirit of the season and the end of the year when they're looking at their tax bills, tax returns. Councilor Reed? Um, that made it to the Cape Courier today for the deadline. Um, the public oh, I, I, well, I've seen it, but it's not in the Courier. I'm sorry. That's and I, it's a wonderful article. It's coming out the 21st. <laughs> Um, I would add to that list the uh, teen center at the United Methodist Church. I'm sorry, it's <laughs> omitted from the list. <laughs> I'm sure if you call a courier, we can you can get that inserted. <laughs> Thank you. Oh well, well. All right, let's move on here. Uh, could we have approval of minutes from the meetings of November 13th and November 25th? So moved. Second. Any comments? All those in favor? Seven zero. Thank you very much. We now have a, an item on our agenda for citizens' discussion period of items that are not on this evening's agenda. Is there anybody who would like to take advantage of that discussion period? Seeing none, we will move on to our consent agenda. We have four items this evening on consent agenda. Is there anybody who needs any of those items removed for discussion? 
Councillor Linnell. Uh, number one, uh, 111. All right. Anything else to be removed? All right. Let us take item 111, please. This is approval of lease of apartment space at Portland Headlight. It, the recommendation from the manager is that he be authorized to execute the lease for the amount of $1,100 per month. Councilor now do you have a question on that? Well, I, I just had a, yes. Uh, I'm in favor of it generally. Uh, I just, uh, I was reading the lease and it, I, I gather that we are, we have, there's a security deposit and there's a first month's rent, but not last month's rent. And uh, I just wanted to, just a suggestion that mm -hmm. perhaps in the future we should look at uh, uh, it's fairly common practice to get the last month's rent, and that's all. Do you want to add that for this lease agreement, sir? Uh, yeah, I would, actually, unless the manager has a, well, an objection. Maybe perhaps it's a little late in the, in the negotiations yeah. for this time, so I don't want to yeah. put uh, the, the manager on the spot that way. But Thank yeah. you. Let us hear from the manager. Yeah, this is the standard main residential lease as, as recommended by the Maine Attorney General's office. We've simply adapted it to reflect, you know, the, the conditions here. Uh, this particular tenant, it, it is a renewal. They've been a tremendous tenant. I, you know, if it was, I, I would agree with you if it was someone new coming in. Plus, I, I knew the state allowed that type thing. Uh, but I, I don't really think it's necessary in this case. Okay, thank you. I, I'm sure the state, uh, uh, I, I don't think the, the state would have any problem with that. Uh, but I just would suggest maybe we'd think about it for another, another time. Thank you. Can I have a motion on this, please? Councilor Reid. Madam um, Chairman, I move uh, approval of the lease for the apartment space at Portland Headline. And authorizing the manager to execute. Second. Okay, thank the, you. The uh, lease for an amount of uh, $1,100 per month. Thank you. We have a second. Any further second. comment? Discussion? Thank you. All those in favor? 7-0. Thank you. Item 112 is approval of the annual liquor licenses for the Inn by the Sea. The clerk um, recommends that we approve the licenses. They do appear to be in order with all information provided. Item number 113 is approval of the Cape Elizabeth Little League request for space for 1997 at Fort Williams Park. The Fort Williams Advisory Commission has reviewed this and recommends we approve it. And item number 114 is approval of the proposed MS Multiple School <coughs> Society Walk at Fort Williams Park for April 20th, 1997. Again, the Fort Williams Advisory Commission has reviewed this and recommends approval. Could I have a motion on consent calendar, please? <coughs> Councilor Cogsell? I move that we approve the consent calendar as recommended. Thank you. Second. Thank you. All those in favor? 7-0. Thank you very much. We have public hearings on one, two, three, four, five items. We will take item number 115, public hearing and action subsequent to the public hearing on proposed dedication of space at Fort Williams Park, including proposed ordinance and master plan amendments. Councillor Jordan, as head of, as chair of the ordinance committee, would you like to give us an introduction, please? Well, I'll throw out, I'll throw out some of the introductions as far as uh, the ordinance committee has has been working on that, and there's been a difference on a little bit on uh, the wood panel may be in there, and also that. Uh, some of the lines that were drawn in the map has been changed since that was put on the agenda. So what I would like to hear is some discussion from the council and anybody to uh, give, us, give us some of their ideas. And uh, we do have, we have it in one, two, and three as far as the fort and dedicating space. And uh, <clears throat> there's some, instead of using the word permanently, we have a recommendation that to go before the committee, be it either with a goal to amplify for the current and future town council, 
that the irreplaceable scenic, natural, and historical qualities of Fort William should be permanently preserved. The Keepers with the Town Council does hereby create a dedicated natural area. You'd like, some would like to see something like that worded in all three of the policy statements, and therefore, <coughs> after some discussion, I would recommend that policy one be uh, tabled until we come back with two and three at a later date. Thank you, Councillor. Is there anybody from the public who would like to address this item? Yes, sir, please come up and give us your name and address. My name is Richard Berman. I live at 1021 Shore Road. And uh, I know any time the word permanent comes up, it, uh, it seems like it's taking away flexibility from future councils. Um, the working group that the council put together that comprised uh, people from the Friends of Fort Williams, uh, the, the Fort Williams Advisory <coughs> Group, uh, the Planning Board, and uh, members of the council kind of worked diligently uh, on this, and, uh, um, and it always came back with the word permanent in it. It was really part of sort of the negotiations of trying to really uh, heal the town and come up with something that everybody could get behind, get their arms around and support. And uh, it's, it's what we came out with, and we, of course, like to see that preserved. Um, I'd only say that if uh, Frederick Law Olmsted and some of his planning in, in Boston and New York didn't have those permanent words in there, uh, you know, the Fenway would be developed uh, right now, Central Park wouldn't exist as it exists right now. And Fort Williams is a very valuable uh, resource, and I don't think there's anybody that would argue that it's in the best interest of the town to uh, keep the park in Fort Williams Park. And I think the uh, best way that I think uh, can be done is to really uh, give the intent uh, to make it permanent, knowing that obviously the future uh, councils can overturn turn this, but I think it's more important to give the intent. And right now, in this point in history, that's what the consensus is saying is uh, make it a permanent dedication. Thank you for your consideration. Thank you. Is there anybody else from the public who would like to address this item? Seeing none, we'll close the public hearing. Council? Council Coxon? Yes, I'd like to move that we approve the amendment to Section 1927 of the Fort Williams Park with the added definitions. Um, adopt the map that's proposed for the southern section of Fort Williams Park and the amendment to the master plan of Fort Williams um, with the amendment, <coughs> although I strongly do not have a problem with permanently, I, I do sort of agree with Councillor Jordan. I like the way you rolled your eyes for the Senate. I wanted to see how you reacted when I say I agree with you. <laughs> that, was, that was a Christmas present. Uh, <laughs> uh, that with the goal to emphasize for current and future town councils that the irreplaceable scenic, natural, and historical qualities of Fort Williams Park should be perpetually preserved. The Cape Elizabeth Town Council does hereby create a dedicated natural area in Fort Williams Park. And then it goes on <clears throat> as it was presented in, in your, um, in our memo. I believe that memo is something that the rest of the council, not on the ordinance committee, just received <clears throat> today. So that, that particular phrase, that language that is phrase, right. new, and I think I left mine home, actually. So, do we have a second to the motion? I'll second that. Thank you. Discussion? Councilor Reid? I have several comments I'd like to make. Mm -hmm. uh, on page one, under uh, uh, D2, uh, please note uh, multi purpose playing field and existing ball field, which is located south of building number 329. I was wondering if on page two, following the definition of multi-purpose playing, fi playing field that the language and existing playing field which is located <coughs> south of building number 20, uh, 326 
um, that language be uh, replicated there? Where? Under the uh, definitions, permanent playing field. The field located in Fort Williams Park, uh, as approved on September 9, 1996, by the Town Council without expansion, and the existing playing field, which is located south of building number 326. I would have a concern with including that. two fields in the definition of one field. Right. Would it be perhaps more appropriate to include that on page three? I was going to ask that it be, if you're including it there, you're being redundant, I believe. Well, I certainly would hate to be redundant. Uh, well, I was also going to ask that it be included on page number three for consistency. OK. Where? Right after a multi-purpose playing field as approved by the town council. I understand that <coughs> current uses may continue but not be expanded. Um, I understand that language, but I uh, think that in light of the uh, level of discussion that has been held regarding that existing ball field that it should be uh, included as a separate field. Council Linnell. Is there another copy of the latest language? Because I don't, for some reason, I didn't get that today. Was, was it mailed out to the council? It was in it my council mailbox. This, this, this was a, a working thing for the um, ordinance committee uh -huh. that we're working on uh, for our next meeting. <clears throat> and we had trouble with the word permanently, so we asked Maureen to draft <coughs> a phrase. And so this is what she proposed that Billy and the rest of us received. All right. Well, you I, want to see it? I, yeah. I it's just read it. it's highlighted. It's difficult for the rest of the council to address that, not having seen it. And I, I've just been informed that I probably received it in my council box today because I'm chairman, and the rest of the council has not received that. The non members not on the ordinance committee have not seen that language. Yeah. I think it was only developed in the past couple of days. Is that correct, Monday. Councilor McGinnis? Monday we worked on that. Mm. So. Let it, if we can stick with <coughs> Councillor Reed's um, first comment here, I would go back to page three and say if we were to include that language, I would think it would be appropriate to include it on line 23, where this is in the addendum to the master plan for Fort Williams under policy statement one, the following exceptions being allowed, current uses including the existing ball field located south of building 326. It's fine with me. May continue but not be expanded. If you want to include that, I think that's the appropriate place for inclusion. Do you want to offer that as an amendment to the main motion um, and take your items one by one, or do you want to offer them <coughs> in total? OK. One by one would All be right. great. So we have an, an amendment offered there. Do I have a second on that? I'll second. Thank you. Where are we seconding it? We are putting it, let me make sure I'm correct, page 3, line 23, would be current uses, comma, including the existing ball field located south of building number 326, comma, <coughs> may continue but not be expanded. Yep, correct. How's the read? Um, on the next page 4. Line 24, no facilities or amenities other than no. pedestrian paths shall be placed in the area. Uh, this is... Is this relative related to... The multi-purpose <coughs> playing field? Let's just go back to the line 23 and do that as an amendment. Oh, excuse me. Okay, let us vote on that. Is there any further discussion on the proposed amendment to line 23 on page 3? Councilman Linnell? Uh, yeah, if I can, can I back up to the permanently discussion? No. Nope. No. Nope. Okay. I'll wait. Thank you. Any further discussion on the line 23 amendment? All those in favor? 
seven zero, so that would be added in. Thank you. We just had to. We have a main motion. We have a number of amendments. Is what I'm anticipating. I want to do it fairly systematically. Councillor Reed, you had some others. Thank you. Yes, on uh, page four, line twenty-four five. No facilities or amenities other than pedestrian trails shall, excuse me, pedestrian paths shall be placed in the area. <coughs> I believe that when we approve that multi-purpose uh, playing field, we approved uh, the addition of several, uh, what I would call amenities, um, as long as they were not move, as long as they were movable and not permanent. Mm -hmm. And does this take that away? What were those amenities? Do you? Uh, goal posts oh. that were movable. Um, benches for the team uh, mates, you know, the teams, not bleachers. And um, I can't remember, there were several movable School board. things. School boards. School boards. Things that weren't lit or amplified, I remember. No fences, mm. no, you know, all those were excluded. But I just have a concern with um, the reference to amenities. Councilor Jordan, what was the Ordinance Committee's interpretation of amenities? Well, I think the main thing I was thinking at the time was uh, like this uh, permanent scoreboards, and permanent backstops, and things like that. Portable ones, as far as uh, the committee as I remember, it was, it's okay as long as they put them in and take them down when they get done. Okay, if this were amended to say no permanent facilities or amenities. Does that work, Councillor Cogsell? This, this is not intended to... Um reflect on the approval of that particular playing field because that's going to go through site plan approval anyway as <coughs> with the different factors elements that we approved this has more to do with um, ending up expanding that into permanent bunkers or things like that well I'll remember that for a few years but I don't know if 10 years from now anybody would the way this is written no permanent facilities after we define permanent I suppose, or <laughs> how about only non-permanent, <laughs> whatever. I, I have a problem with the word uh, amenities, but I can be overruled. Okay. The manager is pointing out to me that, and I'm just going to read this again. I'm going to point it out. Please. <laughs> yeah, I read it. In, in reading this, you know, if staff was, were to interpret it, after its adoption, I would interpret this as meaning that this references to the remaining field area. It's not to the playing field. Because if you read this, the field located in Fort Williams Park, right. is definite, it's multi-purpose playing field, the field located in Fort Williams Park, as remaining. approved on September 9, 1996 by the council without expansion. Mm -hmm. The remaining field area should be, shall be kept open except for field <coughs> buffering and any plantings that may be done as part of a town council approved landscape plan. Only informal recreation will be permitted in this area. No facilities or amenities other than pedestrian path shall be placed in the area. Uh, I, my interpretation of that is you're referring to the remaining field area and not to the multi-purpose playing field plan. Okay. It's that which is uninhibited by the <coughs> multi-purpose playing field. If you want to clarify that, you say sh other than pedestrian path should be placed in this remaining field area. Yeah, it is. Do you want to go for a clarification on that, Councillor Reed, or do you want to leave it? I would appreciate it if the rest of the council agreed. For clarification? <coughs> yes, please. Okay. Councillor Coxon? No. Councillor McGinty. Councillor McGinty? No, if, that, if, if she's saying add in on line 25, uh, this remaining field area. Mm -hmm. Is that what you're saying? Yes. If that's an um, amendment motion, I'll second that. Thank you. Clarify it. Okay. Clarification there. It's not changing the intent, is my understanding, but it is clarifying mm -hmm. it. I got it. All those in favor? 7 0. Okay. What else do you have, Councilor Reed? I just had one more on um, the amendments to the Fort Williams Park District. Uh, two, again, 
I would like to have the existing ball field identified as that which is located south of building number 326 for consistency. What page? What page you want? <laughs> page one yeah. of the amendment of Fort Williams Park District existing zoning ordinance. Page one. Okay, could you say it again, please, now that we're on the uh, yes. page, yeah. literally? Under two, multi-purpose playing field and existing ball field, comma, which is located south of building number 326. It's there. That's, do you want to make a change to that? Am I lost? Is it there? <laughs> you don't have uh, the, latest, the latest packet Rosemary had all the suggested changes that were at last council's meeting. Oh, you said Seven. October 31 draft, maybe. Oh. Maybe November 27th. November 27th. I'm sorry. I'm looking at the wrong draft. Okay. Well, that'll probably make my next question inappropriate. Yes, go ahead. Council, do you have another one? But it's on the October 31st draft. Um, okay. My packet doesn't have the November. I bet it does right, uh, near the beginning. Near the front. You and the... Back too far. Home. You're in good company, however, from what I've seen. There you are. It has a lot of length. We'll let you take some time to flip okay, through that. Okay, no, I'm fine. Okay, Councilor Groff. Um, just on my November 27, 1996 draft, on page two of the amendments to Fort Williams Park District existing zoning ordinance, uh, line four, I have two ors. I assume that's just a typo that we want to clean up. I have does not include active team sports or or motorized or. vehicle or or or. <laughs> or or I think we can delete one of those ors without any further ado. Uh, <laughs> and on my end, it is end of uh, in handwritten form. End. I can't read it. End, end okay. Of end of proposed text amendment to zoning ordinance. <laughs> yeah, Council Graf, that was written in there just so that the next five lines weren't adopted as language within the ordinance. Okay. That's just, otherwise it, it just clarifies that that isn't being adopted as language. Great. That was something else that should have been separated when this was done. Um, Councilor Graff. I would like to uh, uh, commend everyone who worked so hard to fashion this compromise. And I believe that uh, um, this truly is a win-win situation. This, whether we can take the language uh, either way with permanently, and I think the intent's going to be the same, but I think uh, uh, these amendments to the master plan will be beneficial for all the citizens of Cape Elizabeth, and I commend everyone who spent time and energy uh, working on this product. Thank you. Councilman McGinty? On page one, line. 40, I guess it is, where it references section 19-6-8B1. Yes, sir. Is that a reference to the new ordinance? Should be to the existing. This is existing. Well, I don't have an existing 968. MRE didn't correct you. And Mr. McGovern happens to have the big book. Uh, with I happen you. to have mine, too. <laughs> Just one Sorry. of those notes. <laughs> Nor do I. I don't think it goes that far. It doesn't go that far. It is a reference to the new ordinance uh, that's being worked on by the Zork Committee, and it fits in beautifully there, okay. but it doesn't mean anything to the existing ordinance. And the manager's going to take a couple of minutes and go through the Fort Williams we zoning ordinance. That. And we'll, do you have anything else, Mr. McGin Councilor McGinty? Um, only that a question came up on Monday night at our ordinance committee meeting regarding disposal of snow in mm -hmm. that area, the southern section of the fort or the park maintenance area. Okay. And I'm wondering if anybody can offer a clarification of whether the Public Works Department will still be able to deposit snow in that area or not? We're, we're, the Department of Public Works has traditionally placed snow is on the exact area where the multi-purpose play field is going to go. 
it's, it's felt that that would be extremely destructive to trying to maintain that field. So Bob Malley has had a discussion with it, and in large part, I've had a discussion with him about it, and in large part because of the, the new uh, snowblower sidewalk remover uh, for removing snow that the council authorized a couple of years ago, it's that snow dump is not as necessary as it once was. So he feels that uh, uh, we, we no longer need it and we can do without it. Thank you. Okay. You all set, Councilor? Yes, we're not. Okay. Councilor Jordan? I have a comment related to that and also on page four. <coughs> At the top there, I think ATVs should be added to rights uh, but not limited to snowmobiles or ATVs. It's a motorized vehicle, in my opinion. That's both at the top of page four and at the top of page two, actually. It's yes, I guess identical that is true, too. That is true. Was it the Ordinance Committee's intent, Councilor Jordan, to include ATVs? I think, it, as far as I'm concerned, it was an oversight. Well, maybe the other, okay. other two members, you know, yeah. mm -hmm. Looked at it different, but I think it's a normal site as far as a motorized vehicle. Thank you. Councilor McGinty? Um, the reason we included snowmobiles is because snowmobiles are not currently excluded from using the fort, so we included that. ATVs, by ordinance, are already excluded from using Fort Williams. That's why it was not added in there. There's a specific ordinance to uh, prohibit them. Okay. So you're mm -hmm. comfortable with that? I had the same concern, Councilor Jordan. <coughs> that gives me a... And my other comment is, and I have a problem with, there shall be no staging of any construction project or storage of any material in the survey section of Fort Williams Park temporarily use related to project construction being undertaken in this area will be allowed. Now, as I understand that, as I read it, am I correct in saying that they can't store any gravel or any material to use in the world to use in that area of town. Is that the intent of it? That is the intent. At, at, I, I disagree with it 100% and also with the snow removal. I thought a while ago we had an awful time with the traffic on the shore road and there were so many vehicles and we needed sidewalks and we needed this and we needed to ride in the road and now what we're doing is promoting more traffic on Shell Road with trucks and what have you. And I still think there will be snow hauled to the center of town. And I think it's in this cell with many places <coughs> that we can't find a place to store in the snow for a little while. Spring will take care of it and it will away, melt away. And I'll admit there will be a little trash for, to be cleaned up after it's done. But I think there should be an area there, and I disagree with that 100%. And we will support it. Thank you. Councilor Cogsell. Um, we had, as one of the participants in this working committee, the um, Director of Public Works. He um, was very happy with the final um, solution that we, we um, developed. He does not have a problem with um, not being able to store gravel in the um, southern section other than the park maintenance area where he can store things for construction and for projects. Um, I also <coughs> spoke to him about the snow removal and he doesn't feel that it's as much of a problem as it has been in the past because he has better equipment um, so they're not, they don't have to um, transport as much snow. Um, and I feel if he doesn't have a serious problem about it then um, perhaps we shouldn't either. Councilor Linnell? Uh, I tend to agree with Councilor Jordan on this one. Uh, I'm a little uncomfortable with, uh, you know, sort of second hand. And I, uh, if the Director of Public Works was here, I'd, I'd you know, be, it would, uh, uh, that would be one thing. Uh, I think, uh, 
if he would rather store the snow or some other place, he would certainly have that option open to him. Uh, if, if, but if we exclude it here, uh, if we take that option away, he wouldn't be able to do it. So I guess I'd, I'd like to be able to put some snow there if we need to. Do either of you counselors have an amendment? Councilor Jordan, do you want to offer an amendment? Or no, I'm just, I just feel that Shore was such a hazard a few months ago, and here we are sitting here tonight to put more traffic on Shore Road, and seem to be not too concerned about it. And I wish uh, Mr. Malley was here himself, and uh, I know pretty much what he would say because he but we had a meeting a few days ago on the concerns here, and uh, I had understood it a little bit different than what is uh, stated here. And I think it's a shame that the town of Cape Elizabeth can't find a place in that area of town to store the snow. I'll admit, maybe you're not going to have any to haul this year. Maybe you might have a lot. So you people are smarter than I am if you feel you're not going to haul much snow. And on top of that, I would like to, and I think the town ought to be proud, that LP's got a pit here and everybody seems to use it as far as dumping snow. If LP said no, what would you do with it? Councillor Reid. Well, Madam Chairman, if appropriate, the uh, Chairman of the Fort Williams Advisory Commission is here, and he may have some comments that would help us resolve this. Thank you. Councillor Clarkson. I spoke with Mr. Malley yesterday, and I also spoke with him this afternoon, and I asked him if he'd be attending this meeting tonight, and he said no, that he wouldn't. He didn't have a problem with any of this, and he thought that he had fully explained um, his views on this matter to Mr. Jordan when he spoke with him yesterday. Um, he's quite comfortable with what had been, has been proposed. He was there, as I said before, when it was drafted. He um, had an opportunity um, to discuss any kind of restrictions at all. He expressed his concerns over certain items, and they were included in this. And I understand he also had a lengthy um, conversation with Mr. McGovern, and I'm not sure. When was that, Michael? I, we had a discussion yesterday morning in, at which he reiterated that uh, he's not concerned at all about the snow dump issue uh, within this ordinance. Uh, from the very beginning, he has had concern, as <coughs> Jordan suggested, with storage of materials and you know small piles of uh, you know, rock, that type of thing, sand. But he recognizes that that you know this was a process that went through that it did go through he was a part of that process and you know he accepts that you know that is the recommendation of the committee and you know is the will of the community pending the council vote uh, he, he feels he can work around it but he has no concern at all about the snow dump issues thank you mr van fleet did you have anything you wanted to add to this Yes, my name is Jeff Van Fleet, Chair of the uh, Fort Williams Advisory Commission. commission. Uh, in terms of the specific issue of snow uh, storage, uh, that has never been a specific item that the Commission has addressed in this context that I can recollect in, in my years on the, <laughs> on the Commission. Uh, with regard to uh, building materials, however, uh, it is clearly the intent that that no, the, the present staging of building materials be eliminated except for that small area near the garages, which will be for you know, very temporary uh, projects uh, uh, in or, or near the fort, I mean, in a very uh, toned down scale. I mean, that's, that's clear. But in terms of uh, stockpiling uh, snow until the spring, that has never been specifically addressed by the commission. Okay. Thank you very much. Councilor Jordan, I share your concern about the additional, the potential for additional truck traffic on Shore Road when we have to haul snow from the northern part of town to closer to the town center than Fort Williams. I think that's a very good point, and that's something I hadn't thought of before. That's not something that I would expect 
the public works director to specifically have in mind or address either. He, I would, would have expected, you know, something like that if we'd included the police chief, which we did not, and that was, you know, a problem on our part. If, if you would like to offer an amendment to this language, we can do that. Councilor Jordan? I would just like to say that I'm sitting here as a counselor to save the taxpayer as much money as I can, and I'm not going to vote to promote truck traffic from that end of town to the center of town and say that I'm concerned about taxes. And if the rest of you can sit here and feel that you can promote money for more taxes and vote for this, I I commend you. Thank you, Councillor. Mr. McGovern, did you have an answer to Mr. McGinty, Councillor McGinty's? Yeah, Councillor McGinty's question, just to refresh your memory, was the, the reference on line 40, 41 of page 1 of the November 27th draft of the amendments to Fort Williams Park District of existing zoning ordinance. And is a reference to any use permitted, any use allowed under section 1968B1 permitted uses, that is a reference within the new zoning ordinance and not within the current ordinance. As we look at the current ordinance in the section of Fort Williams, what it, what it lists is really a process for going through approving uses. The problem was if you simply change the reference from 1968B1 permitted uses to the current 1927, what it does, it, it opens it up to anything, uh, you know, simply by going through a process. Be because my assumption is that you're going to be looking at the Zork uh, draft within the next three months, I would recommend that you simply delete paragraph uh, or section uh, four. Okay there and it'll sub four. sub four and it'll be quickly addressed through the through the zoning ordinance in the meantime there, there won't be language there that's inappropriate uh, and I, the, the remaining three would sufficiently serve our needs over the next few months thank you council mcginty i would so move and being a member of the zork committee i'd be sure that we could get this included in the the new process and the new okay. ordinance i'll second okay any further discussion on that point we're looking at Page 1, lines 40 and 41, deleting sub 4. All those in favor? 7-0. Thank you. Thank you for picking up on that, Councilor McGinty. A very fine-tooth comb, sir. <laughs> Councilor Reed? Since we will be um, readdressing the definition of permanent mm -hmm. at a future meeting, and since there was no reference to the um, northern boundary of the neighborhood that abuts um, Fort Williams, and since we have this issue of snow storage, could we um, not take action on this tonight and wait until the next meeting? That can be a motion at some point. I, I think there are a couple of other counselors who would prefer to speak before we have anything. Yeah. Would Resemble a tabling motion. Mm -hmm. Councilor Linnell? Yeah, I'd, I'd like to figure out a way to put some language in there that leaves open the possibility of a temporary storage of snow and whatnot. Um, and on the permanent, on the permanent issue, uh, you know, I thought that uh, considering the, the compromise with the, the folks that were, cons uh, uh, that were really concerned about the ball fields in the fort, um, I thought that the permanent language uh, was reasonable. Now, I recognize that it's not binding, but I think the word permanent does send a stronger message to future councils as to uh, they will be uh, a little more reluctant to uh, change things there. And I said at uh, a couple council meetings ago, I said I would um, uh, honor that, uh, I, I said I would support some sort of language that would uh, protect uh, future development in that area, and I intend to keep my word, and so I tend, I, I just want to, to say that I will support the, the permanent word in this instance. Thank you. Thank you. Councilor Coxell? Um, there seems to be such concern about snow storage. I just want to re-emphasize they were only talking about one section of Fort Williams Park. We're not talking about the entire section, the entire park. 
and if the Director of Public Works, with consent of the Fort Williams Advisory Committee, should find another suitable area to store the snow, um, I mean, that could be arranged. But we're only talking about this one area of the park tonight. Thank you. Councilor Groff. And just if we're considering other areas or that area for snow, it would be very, very difficult to store snow on a field that you then wanted to use in the spring in Maine. Apart from the salt content, uh, just the idea of getting kids out playing on that field in the early spring, that would be impossible then. So I, that is not a place to store snow on a brand new field that you're trying to construct that you want to use for spring sports. Thank you. Councilor Jordan. I don't want to store snow on a ball field, a playing field, or any other field that, that uh, <clears throat> the kids are going to go into in the first spring when it's, when it's not ready, I'll put it that way. But I think there's other areas in that fort that could do serve that purpose. And I'm more concerned, as I said earlier, about the cost and the traffic on the Chill Road. And I know there's only going to be a few flakes this year to haul, because the rest of the flakes are going to be blown into somebody's dooryard. And also, I would like to say, as I read this, there shall be no staging of any construction projects or storage of any material in the southerly section of Fort Williams Park, temporary use related to a project of construction being undertaken in this area will be allowed. Now, what's temporary? How many days, how many weeks, how many months? We have, no, we have te temporary defined. Temporary is not defined. The, the <coughs> intent of this language was during the time that the project was ongoing. Uh, you know, the, the intent is one reads it, it is, if there's a, you know, if say we were building permanent toilets at some point, uh, you know, the, this area could be used as staging for that project. Or that while, while, while we were building the ball field, uh, that this area could be used for temporary staging. The, the intent of, of this is to get out of the business of having the fort as a storage place for construction projects as it was during the construct construction of the sewer project, as it was uh, during uh, some uh, road reconstructions, and you got out of the business of storing asphalt and other material there. I think uh, the chairman of the fort committee already addressed that. So, okay, go ahead. Councilor Jordan. So traffic and cost doesn't seem to be into it. I'm on the wrong track when I'm thinking in that direction. Is that correct? I don't think anybody has said that, Councilor George. Oh, well, I just pick out a little bits and pieces of what's being said, that's all. Okay. Thank you. Councilor Cogsell. I move the motion. I'll second. We're back to, we have amendments and what, we have two amendments? Is that correct, Ms. Lane? It had been approved. <coughs> Three. Three amendments were approved. There's no discussion on this? There's no discussion. It's been moved. Motion's been moved and seconded. We're going to take a I vote. I thought we have a discussion. I, I still don't know where. Question. I thought we have discussion after the, the mo motions. <coughs> <coughs> She's moved the question <coughs> under Robert's rules. There is no further discussion. Okay. All those in favor of the main motion as amended. All those opposed? Three to four. Four being Linnell, McLaughlin, Reed, and Jordan. I did not vote for that because I had a couple of other points I wanted to make. <laughs> and I didn't have a chance to. Council Linnell? I, one of the main reasons I didn't vote because I, I wanted to find out exactly what passage Councilor Jordan was uh, referring to. I hadn't found it yet. And, okay, Councilor Jordan's uh, on page 4, lines 13 through 17. 
November 27th. Right. <laughs> right. Right. Thank you. Yes. I would like to look at the map that is on the page immediately following page four in my November 27 draft. My understanding is we're asking for that the map has been revised to clearly identify and label the green, the park maintenance area. My concern is with what shows on this map as a multi-purpose playing field. Do we need to amend this map to make the changes so that that reflects what was approved in September? Do you have a feel for that, Mr. McGovern? I would think we, we ought to do that at the point when the plan goes to the planning board for site plan review. So that way it's truly clear where that is going. We still have a, a bit of a process to go through in the multi-purpose play field. Thank you. Councilor Jordan, part of my conundrum right now is that we're eventually dealing with three policy statements looking at three different areas of the fort. And it's hard for me to know if we're going to address snow storage in either of the other two areas. And I don't know from the, I haven't looked at um, the material out of the ordinance committee subsequent to this policy statement one to know if it's being addressed in either of the other areas. I feel like I'm being asked to deal with something on a piecemeal basis <coughs> rather than knowing the big picture because I'm only seeing policy statement one. I don't know what policy statements two and three are going to include. So I, I have some hesitancy. I do have the hesitancy about the word permanently. And as I stated last month, if I look at the recommended revisions to the master plan and the policy statement one, we're providing buffers to provide ground level privacy and I don't think the public activities on the public property need ground level privacy. Councilor Cogswell? Um, some of those items were discussed in the Ordinance <coughs> Committee as well as in the um, working group. The ground level area that you're talking about, the screening is wording taken from the master plan where it talks about screening of abutting areas. And I just wanted to remind the Council that this particular document before you tonight, <clears throat> this proposal, was part of the compromise agreement from the group that decided that they would not um, pursue the, um, the um, to block the construction of this multi-purpose playing field if we were willing to um, address some of their concerns and we did form that group some of the concerns that were developed um, came from them others were sort of expanded on by the group and by council in a workshop and that I feel to de delay delay a section uh, voting in this section tonight I, I think it's sort of um, not holding up to uh, perceived trust that was given to this this public group um, as far as addressing the other areas of the fort, that was when Councillor Reed said, well, if we're considering one group of neighbors, we should look at the group of neighbors on the northern part of the fort. And if you look at the master plan, that's already addressed. And what the committee has been doing is pulling language out of the master plan and putting it in an ordinance form so that it's easy to find. You're not flipping through however many pages where there's a sentence here and a sentence there. So I, I feel that as a, a political body that this is part of an oral contract that we have with this group and that we should act on it tonight. Thank you. Council Linnell? Yeah, I'm a little confused. I, I'm not sure what exactly what agenda item we're on now. I thought we just voted against something. I, and I, have, I don't think I've ever, we've <coughs> ever had this much discussion after a vote. I'm just wondering 
if we should, I mean, are we within, is it proper for us to discuss something we just voted on, and, or are we, are, are we on another agenda item? I, are we within Robert's rules to continue discussion? Bring up another main motion. Sorry. Alice, I'm again. No, what, what's the point where I, when the question was moved, we voted on We this. voted on the motion. On the motion. on the floor. And it failed. And it failed. I, I may have been out of line. I could have, I probably would have been in better in line with Robert's rules if I'd made, asked for another main motion. That's right. Okay. A re or reconsideration. Thank you. I stand corrected. Thank you. Well, I just, I mean, I, I, <laughs> it just seemed we were going on and on. I, and, uh, I was I'm, exercising. I'm not purpose. finding fault. I just, <laughs> I, I'm really not. I, uh, I, we, sometimes we have one or two brief comments and people, but it just seemed like we were. Mm. I was feeling frustrated that I had not had a chance to make my points. Yeah. <laughs> That's where that came from. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Next item on the council agenda is item 116. Really Action upon proposed council policy clarifying permitted uses on Fort Williams Park Parade Ground and Portland Headlight Field. Mr. McGovern, do you want to introduce this? Yes, thank you, Madam Chairman. I would recommend that uh, this particular item be tabled uh, as a result of your earlier discussion and also so that my assumption is that the ordinance committee is going to be reporting out at your next meeting policies two and three and it, it this just seems to be in sync with that and this ought to be rewritten to, to be in sync with that so I would encourage you to table this item. Thank you. So moved. <clears throat> Second. All those in favor? Seven zero. Madam Chairman. Councillor Reid. Um, as a point of process, uh, I'm going to now uh, quote Councillor Linnell. I'm confused. I thought uh, we were <laughs> discussing a um, possible reconsideration of the previous uh, item. There was never a move for reconsideration. Uh, all right. I would like to ask uh, for a reconsideration of item 115, if uh, I'm still allowed to do that. Yes, you are. If you're on the prevailing side, you can reconsider at this or the next meeting, but not thereafter. I was. I hadn't heard Council McLaughlin comment, although I knew she had some, which is why I voted uh, to oppose the passage. I thought it was premature. Um, and I would like to, uh, do I make the motion? Oh, that is a motion. We vote, and then I make the other motion. Okay. So your well, motion is for reconsideration. Of item number 115? Of item 115. Do we have a second to I reconsider? Order. Councilor Coxell? Did we ever close the public hearing before we voted? Yes, we did. Okay. Uh, Councilor Graff? I'll second the motion to reconsider. All those in favor of reconsideration? All those opposed? Councilor Coxell, did you vote? Yes, with you. Oh, okay. Six to one to reconsider. Um, Jordan, opposed. Council Graff. I'd like to be heard on the motion for reconsideration. Sir. There has been a tremendous amount of time and energy expended by this town to come to a compromise on the southern part of the fort. And to sit there and the culmination of that entire effort is tonight. Uh, as most of you in this town know, I was a strong advocate of building a fort, building a field at Fort Williams, but then tried to fashion a compromise where there would be at one open field there and baseball fields at Lions Field. And as part of that compromise proposal, uh, there was the implicit understanding that there would be one field and one field only at Fort Williams. And people got behind that. It wasn't my idea. It was a community group that worked on that. And there was an incredible amount of time and effort expended. And they came up with a pretty good work product. Now, I can quibble and sit here about the word permanent or not. But it's very clear that a future council has the right to sit there and change. Just because the word's permanent there, you can change it. 
It also is very clear that we can't sit and wait until an entire master plan for the whole park is done before we meet this burden. I want this field fundraising to start. I want this field to be playable for children in, in a period of time. And I want the people who wanted the rest of that part of the park to be a park for informal use. I want them satisfied too. And for us to sit here tonight and not even know what we were voting on in the sense of four to three and not even having people explain the reasons for not voting is an incredible disservice to the people of this town that work so hard to put this policy together. And I would strongly urge the members of this council to not have a view of the trees, but to open their eyes and have a view of the forest. And for that reason, I strongly recommend that we reconsider this motion and that we abide by the commitments that we made to many, many, many people to work together in a cooperative spirit and move on and pass this. Thank you. Thank you. I'd like to explain when the motion was made by Councilor Cogswell, she moved the question. At that point, we do not allow councillors to explain why they are or, not, or are not going to vote for the measure. And I do acknowledge that I was out of line with Robert's rules subsequent to that when I continued with my discussion. Anybody else? Councillor Jordan? I'd just like to make a comment related to what Councillor Graff had to say. I'm not here trying to roadblock or slow up or have any problems as far as that athletic field is concerned. And you're not going to build it this year, and if you don't want them to dump snow in that open field this year, that's okay with me. There's other places in that 92 acres, I think, that some of this work could be done without bothering people that might want to walk down this path or that path. I think you've got to be realistic on what it costs to do things today. Maybe you people don't want to be realistic about it, but I do. Thank you. Councilor McGinty. I have a question and a comment. First question is, did the, the language that was the amendment that was proposed by Councilor Cogshaw regarding the language regarding permanent, that was approved, is that correct? Not that I'm aware yep. of. No. It was no. part of my original motion. Okay, so that whole motion. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Mr. McGovern? I'll briefly explain. The council made a number of amendments. All those amendments were approved. Right. The vote on the main motion was then defeated, which had the effect of negating all the amendments. So none of the amendments were approved because they were part of the main motion and the main motion was not approved. Okay, then I'd like to make the following amendments. I'd like... Uh, You're making a motion. A motion. Do we have a second? Mm -hmm. yeah. we, we've, yeah. we've already voted to reconsider. Okay. okay. That... Councilman again to go ahead. That on page... I'm sorry. <clears throat> page three on the policy statement beginning on line four be it ordered that the language on lines four, five, and six be changed to, with, be it ordered, with the goal to emphasize for current and future town councils that the irreplaceable scenic, natural, and historical qualities of Fort Williams should be perpetually preserved. And then continuing on there from line eight, I'm sorry, continuing on um, the southern section of Fort Williams Park. Also, that on line 23, uh, that's on page 3, that that be changed to read current uses, including the existing ball field south of building 326 may be continued, but not be expanded. And there was one other change. 
There'd been a change on page four. four line, 20, Leading four, so line 25. That's right. At that line, uh, actually line 25, mm -hmm. be changed from the area to this remaining field area. And there had been a change in line one on page one. <laughs> Deleting that sub four. That sub four. Oh, and that uh, <laughs> line 40 and 41, subsection four, be deleted with the understanding that the Zork Committee will revisit that in their process. And also the um, uh, grammatical change on page two, line mm -hmm. four, that one of the ors be deleted. And that is a motion. I'll second. Thank you. Council O'Neill. Yeah. Um, I, I, I think that uh, some reasonable things have been, uh, uh, Councilor Groff's re recent remarks notwithstanding, I think that there have been some reasonable points uh, raised here. I think that I would agree that sometimes the wheels of democracy are turn a bit slow, but I think this, uh, there is a pretty big map here of the southern section of the park, and I think, uh, I think it's too bad not to be able to put snow somewhere there. There's a lot in this map that will not be the, the, the ball field, and uh, I won't, I'm not going to support this motion because I sat here, and, and I wasn't the only one in this council that sat here a couple of months ago and, and uh, looked at people like Mr. Berman and said that, you know, we would like to compromise and, and, uh, put, and dedicate this part of the park and, and, and uh, prevent it from, uh, in the spirit of compromise, and uh, prevent it from being uh, developed further. And so I'm going to stick with a, with a permanent word, and if we're not going to put it there, I won't vote for it, because I said I wouldn't. Thank you. Councilor McGinty? Regarding the, the permanent word, um, from Mr. Berman's remarks, obviously he has a grasp of the process that next week or next month this council can turn around and change everything. He understands that. But to the casual reader of this policy and this ordinance, when they read, not knowing the context of all that's happened in the last six months or last year and a half, that they're going to see the word permanently, and if something needs to be changed, if the council wants to dump snow somewhere that is somehow agreeable to everybody, that the council is able to do that and that we won't have a line of people snaking out down Route 77 wanting to talk at the microphone saying, you said this was permanent. And I think that this compromise language indicates that we intend to keep it permanent, but that by reading that word permanent, you have to understand that it could be changed. And I think it's a reasonable compromise. Thank you. Councilor Reid. I believe I um, have explained adequately the reason why I voted uh, against the motion on the first time, and I'll be voting to support it this time. Thank you. Councilor Graff. If there is some place that Councilor Jordan or another individual wishes to have designate, designated to dump snow at this point in this southern part of the fort, uh, that can either, either happen now, and I'll gladly listen to any amendment, or there's nothing that prohibits at some subsequent meeting if, in fact, Public Works comes back and it's a problem uh, of revisiting this and saying and having a con building a consensus and saying that there is a portion of this where we can put snow. I don't think anybody on this council, uh, especially me, is interested in increasing expenditures in this town for services where we don't have to spend more money. And so I'm more than happy to listen to any of that, to a proposal of that nature, but I do not think that that prohibits us from going forward tonight and being in a position where uh, uh, this zoning ordinance, this amendment can be passed. <coughs> Councilor Jordan. I agree with Councilor Roth what he just said. I'll just reiterate 
that years ago the snow was dumped on the parade ground when they first started to do it. And then that became a little unsightly and now it didn't open and everybody see it. So they decide, well, we can hide it somewhere up back there. I think there's another place that it can be done. But somebody, I was told, might see it walking by and it wouldn't be good if there was cross-country skiing or they were doing some walking in the fort. And I think it's just wrong to put that burden on the taxpayers. Whether they haul five loads or 105, you're still creating an expense. Thank you. Councilor Nell. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Uh, and to perhaps move this along and address uh, the concerns that I share with Councilor Groff and, and Councilor Jordan, uh, I would move that uh, uh, an amendment that we strike uh, in line 13 through 17, starting with accept. In other words, Excuse me, what page, page, four, here? page four. Page uh, four. If we struck. Uh, except line 13, except in the above designated maintenance area, there shall be no staging of any construction project or storage of any materials in the southerly section of Fort Williams Park. Temporary use related to project construction being undertaken in this area will be allowed. I would suggest uh, as a starting place an amendment that would just strike that language, and I think that would take care of it. Thank you. Do we have a second to that? I'll second. Thank you. Further discussion on that point? All those in favor? All those opposed? Two to five. Do you have the five? Mm -hmm. Five were Councilors McGinty, Cogsall, McLaughlin, Groff, and Reed. Further discussion? Councilor Groff? I move the question. We have a main motion. <coughs> All those in favor? Whoop. The main motion. All those opposed? It's five to two with Councilors Linnell and Jordan opposed. Thank you. We will now move to item number 117. This is a public hearing in action upon proposed completion of Columbus Road. Mr. McGovern? Yes, thank you, Madam Chairman. This was uh, discussed uh, for a good, oh yeah. So could I make the, have the record be clear that I'm recused from this, uh, this discussion and voting on this item? Yes, thank you, sir. This was explained last month that the town uh, accepted Columbus Road uh, back in the late 1960s. When the town accepted Columbus Road, it accepted a full portion of it. However, the last 95 feet of the road were never built. Uh, that was uh, an inadvertent mistake on behalf of the, the, that the community made at that point in time. Uh, the residents have come forward and indicated that they'd like to see the road completed. Uh, the immediate abutters under state law, we have an obligation to do that. Uh, there are several different options looking at it. We looked at the different options. It's felt that we should complete it uh, to its very end. Uh, the cost is estimated at around $23,000, including all engineering contingency and whatever. And just to ensure that I don't have to come back to you again on this, I would uh, ask uh, after the public hearing that you uh, authorize the uh, town to arrange for the construction of this road uh, to the end of its accepted portion. Uh, it costs not to exceed $25,000 with the funds to come from undesignated surplus. Thank you. Do we have anybody from the public who would like to speak to this? Seeing none, we'll close the public hearing. Can I have a motion, please? Councillor Reed. Uh, Madam Chairman, I move that um, we um, complete the Columbus Road uh, and that we appropriate up to $25,000 to complete this um, construction and authorize the town manager to take that money from undesignated surplus. Is that okay? Second. Thank you. Discussion? Is that everything? 
you got everything you need to right. the motion. Councillor Jordan. What do we have for a turnaround at the end of it, which you just construct the road up? We, we would have the turnaround <coughs> that was that was first approved by the town council in 1968 or 9, which, which is none. Uh, the vehicles uh, will back up uh, onto uh, the intersection with Kildare Road. It's uh, they need to back up currently. It's a matter of backing up about another hundred feet. Now that you hit the area of 1960, which I remember. Uh, when was these houses built at the end? Uh, well, I'm thinking that the houses weren't there, so they used the turnaround deal at Kildare Road like you're proposing now, so they didn't have to build that roadway up to the end. I'm not sure, but I, somebody ought to think about it. I'm going to vote in favor of it, but I just want to let them know that I have a little memory. Thank you. Any further discussion? <coughs> All those in favor of the motions? Opposed? 6-0. One reclosed. Thank you. That will be um, sometime during the construction season of 1997. <coughs> during spring. Sometime during the construction season. Yeah, we'll try to get that. So sometime before next Christmas. <laughs> Thank you. Number 118 is a public hearing and action upon proposed donation to the land trust of $25,000 from the land acquisition fund to assist in purchasing the undeveloped portion of the Hobstone condominium project. Mr. McGovern? Yes, the town council is also familiar with this item as it was before you last month. Uh, there are sufficient <coughs> funds in the land acquisition fund. Uh, this is where 33 units would have gone into to Hobstone. Uh, I would recommend after the public hearing, assuming that there's public support for this, that you authorize me to execute the conservation easement, uh, provided that I receive certification and writing from the town attorney that the easement conveys the intended rights and that the disbursement of the $25,000 uh, occur at the time of the closing. Thank you. Is there anybody from the public who would like to speak to this? Yes, sir. Madam Chairman, members of the Council, um, I didn't really expect to do this. I'm Richard Haupt, a uh, member of uh, Hobstone Owners Association. I thought it might be of interest to the Council members and the public at large, though, to notice that the, the vote of, that was required of the owners to allow the declarations to be changed was overwhelming. There were, out of 66 owners, there were 64 yes votes. Uh, there was one abstention and one did not return a proxy. So it's about 97 percent, which I think is rather amazing. Also, as far as money is concerned, we're roughly uh, a little over $35,000 in pledges and uh, toward the purchase from the owners themselves. Approximately uh, 10,000 of this is in pledges for the future, roughly 25,000 uh, actual cash, which is in the bank with the land trust now in a special account. So I think that uh, things are moving along, and, and uh, a positive vote by the council is certainly appreciated. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Anybody else from the public would like to speak to this? <coughs> yes. <coughs> My name is Richard Bourbon, 1021 Shore Road. I'm very familiar with Hobstone. I was a landscape architect that designed that project years ago. I was also a developer who wanted to develop the last 33 units to the Homeowners Association said no way. Um, and I'm familiar with the land. It's a, it's a great piece of land to make a great addition uh, to the open space in this town. And uh, I think this is a, it's a great purchase as a taxpayer. I, I thoroughly uh, support the vote to uh, purchase this. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Seeing none, the public hearing is closed. I have a motion, please. Councillor Reid. Madam Chairman, I move that we authorize the disbursement of $25,000 by the town treasurer from the land acquisition fund with the funds to be provided to the land trust at the time of closing for the property and that um, we further authorize the town manager to execute the conservation easement provided he has received certification in writing from the town attorney that the easement conveys the intended rights. Second. Thank you. Discussion? I just want to bring it to the attention of the rest of the, the councils that the minutes from the planning board of um, November 19th also um, voted to 
separate phase three as a lot and conserve it as open space from the original approved condominium plan. Thank you. Good. Councilor Jordan? I just begin to think I'm getting a little crunchy, but I just want to ask a question. When we put the $25,000 into this, the land trust is in control. Is that correct? The town has nothing to say about it. The town holds the, the land trust would own the property. We would hold a conservation easement over it, which conveys certain rights to the to the to the town of Cape Elizabeth, the the, the <coughs> entity and the provisions within the conservation easement that specifically, you know, give certain rights for walking for a couple of parking spaces, for egress over Hubstone Road, whatever the main road is called going in. Hubstone Road. I understand that. So therefore, <coughs> land trust, like on page four in the timber cutting and vegetation and the removal of dead wood, that's up to the land trust and not the that's town. Correct. They would be the owner of the property and we would have enforcement mechanisms as, a, as, a, as an easement holder uh, to ensure that the conditions within the conservation easement are met. That they be a, somebody be allowed to do the timber harvesting, because I feel when timber is grown and, and it is fruitless, it should be cut and not let that go down and run away. So I just want to know who has a, is going to have the right. One of the other can block it. That's all. I'll put it that way. That's better English for me. When it they could say we're going to do it. The town could say we didn't. Couldn't. The land trust retains that those rights. It appears, doesn't it? Am I reading that? <coughs> Someone from the land trust. You want to address it, Mr. Clifford or Mr. Blake? Sorry. That's fine. Nat Clifford, a director of the Land Trust. Uh, the intent of the uh, easement and, and uh, our ownership is to provide for proper maintenance of the property. I don't believe that uh, harvesting such as uh, either selective cutting or, or clear cutting is, is contemplated. It would be more a matter of uh, clearing out blowdowns and, and that sort of thing. Just the blowdowns is what you're thinking? That's correct. Not any timber that's grown, fully grown, as you it might is, say. The ability is there if, if there are uh, trees, perhaps, that need to be taken down, but uh, the intent is not to uh, encourage or, or particularly provide for, for timber harvesting. It's, it's uh, maintenance of the property for uh, conservation and, and passive recreational purposes. Well, I understand all that, but evidently the Conservation Commission doesn't agree when timber is grown to its Fullest growth and its best for growth that you shouldn't cut it down and let some other start. You should wait till the birds down. So is I, that what you're trying to? No, I don't know what the huh? uh, attitude of the Conservation Commission is. We're not. Okay. That. If I might, Councilor Jordan, this generally mirrors the provisions that are within our other conservation easements. And <coughs> it's, you know, that we have the right to remove brush, <coughs> remove trees for maintenance of footpaths, for you know, damage was through storms, but the intent of all of these is that they not be used for commercial timber harvesting. I didn't say anything about commercial timber harvesting. I went on a road on a piece of property on Soil Road that was given to the town not too long ago, and I had Conservation Commission members there saying what a beautiful site, and I was crawling over trees that big that had got blown down and was rotten away. Well, I don't call that good stewardship of woods. This, this does give the right to clear and restore vegetation that is damaged or disturbed by the forces of nature. And that, that responsibility and actually that right is uh, <coughs> still within the land trust and not within the town. I get the message. Any further comment? We have a motion on the floor. All those in favor? 7 0. Thank you.
Item number 119 is a public hearing and action upon a proposed revised general assistance ordinance. Mr. <coughs> Governor? Yes. Every couple of years, as the State Department of Human Services issues new rules and regulations, promulgates new rules and regulations related to general assistance, the Maine Municipal Association issues an updated general uh, assistance ordinance. Uh, also within that is they, they also update the allowances for housing, the allowances for food, and, and other things uh, based on certain federal standards. Uh, it has been the tradition within this community to, community to adopt the recommended guidelines uh, without change uh, for, for several purposes. One is so that uh, when we have issues of understanding and clarity, when we call the Department of Human Services, they know what we're talking about. And secondly, when we call MMA, who has a staff person for this, they also know. Uh, and third, so that, you know, as, as we try to change something like this, then we get into having to review legal issues and by uh, just taking their model ordinance, it keeps us away from that. So I would encourage you to adopt uh, this as presented. Yeah, so moved. Public hearing. So moved. Is there anybody from the public who would like to address this? <laughs> Seeing that, I will close the public hearing. Could I have a motion, please? I move the adoption. I'm not going to read it. Good. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Councilor McGinty. I have a question regarding the Fair Hearing Authority on page 38. And my, yes. qu my question is um, on section 7.3, the, the municipal officers will appoint a Fair Hearing Authority. I guess my question is, who is the Fair Hearing Authority? Uh, it has been a gentleman, W. John Ammerling, uh, by appointment of the council. Mr. Ammerling, I ran into his wife at the uh, dry cleaners a few weeks ago, and he's moved out of town. Uh, you know, technically, an out-of-town resident could be the Fair Hearing Authority, but you know, perhaps the appointments committee uh, should recruit a new one at some point. It's generally looked at as having an outside party. Maybe you've got someone tonight. Uh, no, we didn't. Uh, I did recheck the list. I, I would question whether one person would be an appropriate. Maybe it would be like a three-person board. Uh, and I just throw that out for. How many times have we utilized that service? Uh, I don't think we've ever used it. I know m many communities that have to deal with it more often have a. Uh, have someone that they hire an attorney. That's the way the city of Portland has handled it. City of South Portland, the council itself serves as the fair hearing authority, and he has all of those appeals, usually at the conclusion of council meetings. And, uh, that last time it came up here, it was the desire to get an outside volunteer council to do it. Uh, C O U N S E L. <laughs> <laughs> Councilor Reid. Um, I have several questions, but due to the lateness of the hour and the inconsequential nature of the total expenditures, uh, not to the people affected, but uh, just for the public's information and the council if they haven't reviewed this, you know, two years ago our general assistance allocation um, $4,656 was spent last year, uh, $3,677, and year to date, which is now uh, five months uh, into the year, uh, $529.39. Um, however, um, I have several questions about it um, that would not allow me to support this boilerplate, and so I will be voting against it. Thank you. Anybody else? Mr. McGovern. Yeah, I did as late, and I appreciate Councilor Reed's comments. Uh, <coughs> this came about, the, we used to spend $17,000, $20,000 a year. The state totally changed their provisions for general assistance in terms of maximum allow, allowable amounts and, you know, ending welfare as we know it. And uh, <coughs> as a result of that, uh, it's, it's been really difficult. Some people that come in and you know, we'll, we'll generally try to help them with emergency assistance, but it, it made ineligible most of the people that formerly were eligible, and it's, uh, it's been tough. That's why I'm voting against it. Thank you. Anybody else? Councilor McGinty? Um, I'll, I'll support this, but only if we can revisit sometime in the future this uh, review authority and make sure that we have 
a proper authority in place. And I just throw it out that I'd like to see that reviewed. Also, in response to uh, Councillor Reed's comments, she might find that some of this um, assistance is being picked up by the Jordan Trust, Trust Fund people, because we often deal with people who are not eligible for general assistance and come to us for aid. And so we are picking up some of that. And I couldn't give you a figure at this time. But. Thank you. We have a motion. All those in favor? Opposed? Six to one. Read. Thank you. Item number 120 is a report from and council action upon the appointments committee recommendation of citizens to fill vacancies on town boards and commissions. Councilor Reed is chairman of the appointments committee. Would you like to give us a briefing, please? Uh, yes, for the council and the public, once again this year, we had more applications for positions than we had positions uh, to fill. Of course, as always, there were some more popular than others. Um, that has led us um, to make the determination that the Cable Television Advisory Commission, uh, which was so um, good in fighting the uh, increases uh, a couple of years ago um, could pretty much manage with five people instead of the seven that have been previously appointed to three-year terms. So um, we have uh, changed the composition of that committee to be a five-member committee uh, with three years three-year terms, and then two members, um, which will be one-year terms, and we will be recruiting high school and college students with an interest in uh, the cable television and who are not employees of the CETV. Um, with uh, out um, a lot of additional time, I will just read through the list of names and the boards or commissions that they have been um, recommended for. Helen Damon and Bill Barton, three-year terms to the Art Commission. David Scheffler, three-year term to the Board of Assessment Review. Wayne Daniels to a three-year term for the Cable Television Advisory. Debbie Riley, a three-year term to Community Services. Marsha Wiggins, a one-year term to Community Services. Conservation Commission, three-year term members Dan Chase and John W. Green, Jr. Family Fun Day, three-year member um, Everett Johnson and one-year member Emily Scotton. For the Fort Williams Advisory Commission, three-year terms each, Jonathan Chapman, Elizabeth Crane, Paul Phillips. Three years on the Personnel Appeals Board uh, will be served by Gerald Petroselli. The Planning Board three-year members are Tom Emery and Ron Azalina. Excuse me, Ron. The Recycling Committee has three new members. The two three-year terms are Larry Glantz, um, Trish Brigham, and a two-year term um, will be Mary Ann Levitt. The Riverside Cemetery Trustees, three-year term, Milton Hollowell. Three-year terms on the Thomas Memorial Library Trustees are Ann Carney, Ruth Griffin, and Lynn Jones. The Zoning Board of Appeals, three-year terms, Henry Warren, Joseph Frustashi, and Thomas Laprade. Those are the uh, standing committees, and I'd like to ask for approval of those separate from the Two Lights Road Design Review Committee, which is a uh, specific uh, committee, if I may. Second. Do we need to? Yeah. All those, pardon me, we're separating this into two items. Do we need to vote on that? We'll vote on Separation yes, first. Do we, do we need to vote on separating the, the item? I made a motion, John seconded. So. Okay. All those in favor of wait, 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 wait. yes, Councillor. I just like to ask a question. The procedure may be pretty technical or not to concern with people. Is do they have the right to move that from a three? I mean, seven member down to five without the council changing that policy. The council will come up at one time or another and said there'd be seven members on that committee. Now, should the council move it back to five, or does it matter? I just 
Well, I believe we can. Mr. Ross, say yes? Okay. We, we can do it as part of the motion. I don't believe there are any ordinances involved. Yeah, I, I checked to see if it was in the Board of Commission ordinance, if it was in the Communications ordinance, it was in neither. So therefore, it would be simply a, a council vote that you could make this evening changing the compensation of the uh, composition, composition of that committee. <laughs> the compensation, the compensation will remain, remain zero. Yeah. That would be part of the motion, I believe, Councillor Jordan. Is that part of the motion? Yes, sir. Okay. <clears throat> Councillor Linnell? Yeah, just a point of clarification. Uh, on the uh, Cable t uh, TV Advisory Commission, we were looking at high school or college age people for one year terms. And just for their benefit, um, someone could be in high school going to, say, Shepherds. They don't necessarily have to be uh, going to Cape Elizabeth High School. Uh, or, they, or they don't necessarily have to be uh, in college. I mean, it's high school or college age residents of Cape Elizabeth. Just, just as a point of clarification. Who are not employees of CETV. Thank you. Thank you. All those in favor of the motion? 7-0. Thank you. And the second part of your report, please. Uh, yes. The Two Lights Road Design Review <coughs> Committee was also a group uh, where we had um, many more applications than we um, had spots for, but I'd like to read the list. Uh, Gary Beckwith, Bob Harrison, Patricia Medina, David Griffin, and then three Two Lights Road residents, Ann Carney, Dr. Richard Sullivan, Dr. Fred Poulin. All right, second that. Thank you. All those in favor? 7-0. Thank you. Madam Chairman, I have one other comment. Yes, ma'am. <clears throat> Go ahead, please. Uh, we are currently in a search for uh, two members at large to serve on the farmer, farmer, excuse me, former for farm property study committee. And the purpose of the committee is to consider the status of the property, excluding that portion which is utilized as the town refuse disposal area and the storage treatment facility, and to make any recommendations relating to the property that the committee believes is in the best interest of the community. Uh, this work will begin uh, at the first of the year, and we're asking anyone interested to please apply as soon as possible and no later than December 31st. Thank you. Thank you. Item 121 is the annual appointment of assessor, code enforcement officer, building inspector, and local plumbing inspector. Mr. McGovern. Yes, thank you, Madam Chairman. Uh, this is something that's looked at every December. There is an employee present uh, who, who is uh, part of this discussion and consideration. Uh, that employee has asked that uh, a chance to address the council on this issue. Uh, under the Maine Public Records and Proceedings Law, uh, commonly known as the Maine Right to Know Law, uh, if that employee wishes to have such a discussion and uh, they wish it to be an executive session, uh, the council should uh, honor that particular request. Uh, so I would uh, encourage you to go into executive session uh, on this particular item and then return uh, with the intention of returning sub uh, subsequently for a vote uh, on the on the recommendation. I don't believe we need the cameras to stay for the That my sense would be that we do not need the camera crew to stay for this. I would ask that we take an item out of order, and that would be citizen discussion of items not on the agenda. So moved. Second. All in favor? <coughs> Second. Is there anybody in the audience who would like to speak on an item that is not on tonight's agenda? All right. Seeing none. I will entertain a motion to go into executive session, after which we will return potentially for a vote on item 121. And if anybody has questions on the outcome of that vote, they may contact Town Hall tomorrow. Councilor Coxell. Madam Chairman, I move we go into executive session for personnel discussion. Thank you. Second. Second. All those in favor? 7-0. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, I think there. The back room.